one. Hello, I'm the Wolf. I'm Daddy-O. Welcome back to the Wolf Den. Back inside at the Wolf Den. Yes, and now hopefully you are hearing us clearer and you are seeing us better. So and the audio won't be out of sync when you go to post. That should be true. So uh, we took a little time off to uh, get situated with some new equipment and... We've got 90% of the of the upgrades that we need. We still got one crucial little piece that we need to take care of just to make these the best that we can make them for right now. Yeah, and right now we're at the best we can do. But first of all, huge shout out to our friends over at Mid Valley Pond in Turlock, California, 270 West Main Street. Not a sponsor, just some cool dudes that have helped us out with our equipment upgrades. And uh, they actually got us well i i mean i paid for it but they got us the camera we are using now um so no more video shot on my laptop now we're going with and, the camera uh, and if you've seen uh, if you look at the eric wolf vlogs you'll see about our trip down there which we should do another one sometime at some point we shall and now that we have a new camera and a new mic hey <laughs> why not yeah should sound much better so this is episode 18 episode 18 and uh oh uh we've got a kind of a new format although we did get a coolly upgraded camera it only allows us so much recording time yeah so, so these are going to be a little shorter right I, I have to figure out the audio or not the audio but the uh, recording length settings and once i can do that uh we should be able to go back to our as long as we need to talk exactly so this one's going to be a little on the on the shorter side for now and probably the same with wanna wrestle we might have to split that in half so Anyway, let us get on with it, and we are talking about uh, Mandalorian, the season one finale, episode number eight. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. As season two, episode one premieres October 30th. Looking forward to that. Uh, But uh, the, what is it called? Not the Reckoning. It's the one right after. Redemption? The Redemption, yes. So, uh, our heroes in trouble. Um, Moff Gideon. Yeah. Yeah. Moff Gideon has them pinned down and is breaking out some kind of super weapon that uh, everybody has had experience with. Well, at least uh, Mando and Carla have had experience with as uh, her shock troop buddies. Cara. Cara Cara, Dune. Cara. Did it? What I say? Carla. Carla. Oh, Cara Dune. uh, As her shock troop buddies have been killed by it. And Mando, as the siege of Mandalore was destroyed, was carried out with the same. Type but it of just weapon. looked like a fifty caliber uh, Gatling gun. Yeah, and with la- that shot lasers instead of bullets, right? That's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it was a fifty caliber laser Gatling gun cannon thing. Yep, and so and also at the same time we have our drama with Baby Yoda as the two. Uh, uh, oh, where's Scout Baby Trooper. Yoda? Yeah, I don't know. The two scout troopers uh, holding holding captive after they have killed Quinn. Quill. Quill. Oh, Quinn. <laughs> Anyways, I uh, have killed him, and uh, they're, uh, Seth Rogen's uh, scout trooper is trying to see, um, trying to get a look at the baby Yoda, and eventually when he does, uh, he gets bit in the finger, so his response is to punch Baby Yoda in the face. Yeah. Which prompts IG-88 to finally arrive on scene, which I forgot, I entirely forgot about in the last episode. Um, which is why didn't he save Quill, but... What I want to know is how, who notified him. Because he was left back at Quill's, or Quill's... Um... No, he was on Mando's ship. Was he? Yeah. Okay. So what prompted him to... Probably the dead body of Quill. But anyways, um, IG-88 uh, wipes the floor with, uh, with the two scout troopers um, and goes in on their speeder bike to save, well, not to save the day, but to, to definitely help him out of a sticky situation. Oh, he's, he saved the day. Yeah, as he comes in blasting. Well, more than once. More than once, but yeah, he's in there blasting, rooting, tooting, shooting, and uh, that prompts Mando to open a door and start putting. Well, he doesn't really put boots to asses. He puts more like lasers to faces, but 
hey, he's doing it. Um, Cara Dune has her big Gatling gun. I said Carla again, didn't I? Cara Dune has her big Gatling gun. Da, 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 taking people out. That was more like what was Terry Crews' uh, gun in The Expendables? Oh, yeah, kind of like. Uh, yeah. I know it was his girlfriend, but I don't remember what it was called, but that's more like what that was. Oh, yeah. Um, I want to say it was Sheila. But, anyways, know. not. But that's also a good movie, Expendables. But, anyways. Uh, oh, Amaya Sorry. Kaboom was the, was his gun's name. That's right. Uh, but anyways, um, now as it looks like Mando is getting ready to take out uh, Moff Gideon, he shoots, I'm guessing it's the energy cell pack, and it explodes, nearly killing Mon uh, Mando. But uh, the other three heroes are able to escape with IG-88 coming to... Mando's aid, even though he's being real. How did he? Okay, they all went into the um, tunnel to the sewers. Yeah, through the. Uh, did IG88 go through there? No, he stayed behind, and then he was like trying to help Mando, who was saying no, you know, don't help me. But eventually, he gave in, and they were able to escape. And Mando started to live, you know, get better, anyways. Um, find out that all the Mandalorians down below have been wiped out somehow. It's still by the shock troopers, or by uh, the probably by the death troopers because they'd have to. They'd probably be the most elite to go in and take out the Mandalorians. Um, but they find out the blacksmith is still alive. She tells Mando he didn't fail. And gives him two gifts: uh, jetpack, the rising phoenix fighting style, which is awesome. Uh, and he's given his clan sig uh, insignia, and we learn about the Jedi. Uh, well, we learn about the Jedi from Mando's point of view as these enemy space wizards, basically. Uh, and so that they choose the lava flows to escape so they can get back to Mando's ship. However, IG-88 learns... There are troopers on both sides forming a pincer ready to blast them Out to pieces. Out at the exit of the tunnel. the tunnel. Yeah, to blast them to pieces with their laser. So IG-88 says, well, I'm programmed that I, my like factory programming is I can't be captured. I would have to self-destruct rather than, rather than be captured. So... But he also was programmed to protect the baby Yoda. So there's a conflict and... Mando tells him, hey, you can't self-destruct because you have to protect the kid. But then he says, if I go out there and I self-destruct and blow all these uh, troopers to hell, mm -hmm. then, I'm, then I'm fulfilling my mission of protecting the kid and I'm not being captured. Exactly. So and Mando, who for whatever reason hates droids, which we still don't know, we're not clear on yeah, why, he, he, hasn't, that he hasn't kind of gets attached to IG-88 and I'm not crying, you're crying. IG-88 says, you're sad. And he's like, no, I'm not. And he's like, I'm a nurse droid. I analyzed your voice patterns. Yeah, you are indeed. So, it all comes. It all comes down to when they get out of the uh, or IG88 go, walks through the lava, which is already destroying him because mm -hmm. it's you know it's burning his legs off and he starts kind of sinking down. But when he gets uh, among all the troopers, a little door opens up on his chest and a little ball comes out with a red blinking light. And anytime you see a red blinking light on anything, mm -hmm. you know it's going to blow up. Right. And, and the I, troopers even knew that because they looked and they were like, oh, crap. Yeah, I even love it. They have their guns and they're just like, oh. And then boom. Blam. Gone. Blows them all apart. And then, the, you know, Mando and Cara Dune and what is that guy's name? Cannot think of it. Creed. <laughs> Apollo don't... Creed. That's all I'll call him until we can remember his name. Right. Uh, Apollo Creed comes out with him and the baby. And the baby Yoda. Yeah. And uh, and then they're starting to make their way out. And then from there, uh, they're like, well, this is over with. And see you later. Um, uh, Apollo Creed gives uh, offers uh, Cara Dune to stay in that, whatever the name of that town is. And well, it was the name of the planet. Work for him. And then she says, sure. And then they say, what about you, Mando? Do you want to come, you know, hang out with us? And he's like, nope. Because I forgot what the rest of his mission is. Uh, he's got to take, do. basically, he's trying to return the baby Yoda to the clan of space wizards. Uh, from his, that's his point of reference, anyways, for what the Jedi are. Um, 
But but right before that happens, Moff Gideon dun, 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 dun. in his slick Tie Fighter. He's got like the best Tie Fighter so far that they've mm-hmm. designed in the in the um, yeah, Star Wars universe. Because Kylo's just kind of look like a normal yeah Tie Fighter too. And, and Darth, Darth Vader's Vader. was the cool one in Episode Four. Mm-hmm. But this one is it's it's super slick looking. It's badass, mm-hmm. and he comes around and tries to uh, wipe them out with laser cannons. Although he's a bad shot, it seems yeah. like everybody, almost everybody in in space or in zombie apocalypse or wherever you're at, is a bad shot. Well, you know, it's not entertaining that the villain just pops you in the face and then even go back over. to uh, well, even Batman is a terrible shot. If you go back and watch the one with uh, Jack Nicholson and Michael Keaton, hmm. Jack Nicholson is standing in the path of his bat wing, and mm-hmm. he, sh- he shoots a whole thing, and the, and, the, and the shots of the guns just go wide on either side of Jack Nicholson and Choker. Hmm. So it's like, dude, you suck. <laughs> like, and you can do all this other stuff, but you can't shoot straight and kill this dude. I don't know. But anyway, uh, Mando uses the jetpack yeah. to, uh, to thwart Moff Gideon by flying up... Um, Flying up behind him and then shooting a uh, like a grappling hook type of situation onto his ship and it's pulling him around and and uh, he uses like he uses the jetpack to actually close the distance. Well, which I thought I it was before. what I thought it was is like you just had a button that like zip. That's what like, I thought. It would too. pull the cord back. It's to like you. he did that, but he also used his jetpack to propel him forward. I had missed that. And before. then he so he lands on the Tie Fighter and. Uh, he sets an explosive on there. Um, he, the first one fails, and but then he put the other two of the three that he had, and then he and then he let go, and then Moff Gideon's like, "Oh crap!" and it blows the wing off of him and mm-hmm. crashes down. Day is saved. All is good. Uh, even Apollo Creed, until we can figure out what his name is, says that was awesome, which well, I quite impressive, Mando. Right. Um, so uh, Mando and Baby Yoda trek off into the sunset to go find the clan of space wizards. However, closing shot is some Jawas picking apart a TIE fighter. When Moff Gideon's TIE fighter. fighter. When all of a sudden, the dark saber is ignited and Moff Gideon cuts his way out. Of his TIE fighter right. cockpit. And he's standing there with the dark saber, which means bad things are going to happen. Yes. Shout out to Giancarlo Esposito, one of my favorite actors. Mm-hmm. Gus Fring. Um, God dang, he's just done so much. Actually, he first came out in an old TV show in the 80s, 80s, I believe? Mm -hmm. Late 80s, early 90s, called Homicide, Life on the Street. That's the first place I ever saw him. I don't know if he'd acted before, but that's the first place I ever saw him. And just lo and behold, all these years later, great character actor. Gus Fring is one of the best characters ever Mm -hmm. on TV. Uh, Moff Gideon seems to be a pretty good, pretty big shot in the Star Wars universe. Right. And cut scene, that's a wrap on season one. Yep. So, Mandalorian, season one rating, nine out of ten. I will go... Yeah, I will say nine out of ten also. I was thinking ten out of ten, but I don't know. There's just... I I don't know what, for me, what's keeping it from being a perfect ten out of ten, but nine out of ten, it's a great show. Phenomenal. Highly recommended by the by the wolf na- to the Wolf Nation. Mm-hmm. From the Wolf and Daddy O. Okay, uh, the Boys episode three, season two, the Big Race, no. or season one, the Big Race. So we have A Train going against Shockwave. Shockwave to determine who's the fastest man alive. And uh, A Train is actually nervous. He feels that he's going to lose. So that makes me think that Shockwave is faster than him. But uh, he takes a compound V. It's like a super steroid. Yeah, some kind of super steroid. Actually, I know what it is, but I can't tell you because oh. I've already wa- I've already seen the whole season. But it's almost like an enhancement drug, and it, and uh, his brother. It's like they think their dad has passed, and his brother's his only family, and his brother's telling him, you know, don't be doing that kind of thing. And mm-hmm. he notices, like, hey, you're like. You're like hyped up, and he's like, "No, I'm not." Mm-hmm. And so uh, there's something going on there that that needs to be investigated. And our heroes, the boys, uh, find out about compound, compound v. v, and they're trying to 
they're trying to snatch it up so that Frenchie can do a chemical test analysis on it, figure out what it is. And there's a great scene where um, uh, 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 Butcher, Billy Butcher, um, is causing a distraction to with, by keeping the attention of um, of uh, Homelander, so mm -hmm. Homelander won't hear the sound or anything. Because I would imagine you have to concentrate. Yeah, to if you want to discern something, unless it's like obvious, like a big explosion or something that's mm -hmm. going to get his attention. But when it's movements or whatever, you know, if he's got his attention focused somewhere else, like at that point um, on Billy Butcher, then he's so that's a distraction. And at the same time, Huey runs into uh, Annie, who he discovers is Starlight, and he didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And he's able to go and talk to her. And that's another one because there's a great scene where yeah, they, Starlight opens the door and you can see Frenchie. Well, Frenchie is Frenchie's in the Frenchie's breaking into the locker room through mm -hmm. the air vent and he's going to see if he can get into uh, A Train's gym bag and find the Compound V. And Starlight, of course, being a member of the uh, the Seven, she's going to go use the locker room. I don't know if she was going to change clothes and leave or what she was going to do, but she uh, she opens the door and you see. Frenchie there on the rappel line on his rappel rope, and almost like in a Spider-Man. Yeah, uh, he was position. just like stuck. That <laughs> I, was hilarious. I really like that. Um, but uh, you know, Huey's able to distract her, uh, take her for like dinner. No, uh, they just go have nachos. Well, nachos and a beer. Which Cause depending they're in, on because they're in a sports stadium. Yeah, but depending, that could be dinner. But anyways, um, Frenchie's able to. Oh no, he's not able to still. It's compound. not there. It's not Compound V, but uh, Mama's Milk, which is an interesting name, uh, is able to recognize the signs of an addict and know that A Train's girlfriend Pop Claw kept some for herself. Yeah. And so he went back to her apartment to. Well, because they had installed surveillance minutes, cameras, right. and he popped it on his phone and said, "Uh huh." So they're able to go back. Now the only thing that I wish they would have. Explained a little bit more about Pop Claw is yeah she's A Train's girlfriend and dealer but could she I wish they would have shown some of her powers because that would have besides made, the claws that came out and mm, her strength well but that's the thing the strength is only showed under the compound V that's true so that and that's what I mean is like she takes the compound V and we see her. You know, enraged and she's like bench pressing thousands of pounds and she kills her landlord yeah. in an interesting way yeah if you've seen the trailer you know what that is I'm not discussing that on this channel but um, what that's what I mean is I wish they would have like I mean just this scene with her struggling to open like a pickle jar and then a train come over and open it that way the compound V feels like we know it makes a train go faster, but it turn you know it could turn this weakling into this powerhouse, you know. Yeah, we don't know the, the how much of that was her own right. power versus the compound V. Right. Um, I wish that would have been explained a little bit more, but uh, the boys basically catching Popclaw in the act of uh, killing her landlord. Ooh, that felt good. Uh, oh, well, actually, they came in after she did it. Yeah, well, they saw it though. Yeah, they saw but, uh, it through that, the surveillance. That's kind of enables them to blackmail her and take the compound V. Right, and then on the other, then the subplot is that Homelander is figuring out that there's something going on. Mm -hmm. He's not sure because they hadn't they hadn't found translucent yet, and then they did, mm -hmm. which he was at the bottom of the ocean in. In, in a zinc, I believe it was. In a zinc lined um, uh, suitcase, or not suitcase, uh, like a, when you, what do they call those? Um, not a foot locker, a trunk, a steam trunk. Yeah. Um, and he was in several bags because they blew him apart. Mm -hmm. And so at first, um, I can't remember, I think it's Melinda, I think that's the character. Mm -hmm. She's the head of, or she's not the head of Vought. 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 She's not the head of the corporation, but she's she's pretty far up there. She's she's the handler of the seven. Um, at first, she was like, you know, how do we know that this was specifically done to uh, 
to like threaten us to threaten us and then when the uh, homelander has uh, the deep show him he opens the lid and says we're coming for, for you. you now the zinc line is important because we we forgot to mention that homelander can see through anything but zinc. but zinc which is weird yeah so i actually talked to tim about this so check out timothy long blacksmith you know i asked him about the chemical compounds and like stuff that would make zinc and lead different because of the superman comparison right, right? Uh, he said, you know, he said a lot of stuff I didn't understand, I'll be honest. But really when I asked him, he was like, eh, they probably just picked a metal. <laughs> and I, I can't like, see through aluminum foil. I don't know. Yeah, but, uh, yep, so we, so, uh, Homelander knows that he's at war with somebody he doesn't know yet. Who? Who yeah, is? he doesn't know who yet, but he knows that they're at war. But for him, he should be able to put maybe the pieces together. Or was, why was Billy Butcher staring at him at the at, at the stadium? Yeah, but he doesn't know he who just Butcher kept look, is. Not yet. He just keeps looking at him like, who's this dude? And mm -hmm. but still, it's like, hey, there was an attack on the seven. This dude was mad. Was mad uh, dogging. Sad dogging me. You're mad dogging me. <laughs> and it's like, what's up with that? Um, can't wait for you to see the next episode. Uh, we should be getting on that pretty soon because mm -hmm. um, it's just going to keep getting better until until the uh, end of it and you're going to be like whoa and then it's going to I imagine the season f uh, premiere is going to pick up right where the other one left off and it's just going to be a mind blower right well we look forward to checking that out but that wraps up episode 3, three of, of the boys. boys on season 1 uh, we could talk about Walking Dead, finally, episode 16. Coming back. Yeah, we, I don't believe on the, I think we've mentioned it here and there in passing, but we haven't actually talked about The Walking Dead. Um, we are huge fans of it. Um, I started watching in season two. My brother got, I, like, I knew about it. But um, for whatever reason, I wasn't, like, I just saw the name The Walking Dead, and I was like, meh, and I wasn't into it. And my brother came over put it on and I was watching and I was like, oh, this is great. And I've been watching it ever since. I've since gone, especially now, back and rewatched season one. And it is, okay, it started in 2008? No, 10. 2010? Yeah. Because I thought I'd seen, I thought I was, well, I, yeah. They were releasing trailers in 2009 and 2010 is when the show well, started. Well, because I was... Well, it was after me and Diana broke up then, but mm -hmm. I remember seeing previews for it around the time when um, when uh, Breaking Bad was on. And I was like, this looks interesting. And I did watch the first episode, but I really didn't think much of it, so I never watched it again until the third season opener. Mm -hmm. And then I've been hooked ever since. Yeah, season three is when they go to the prison. And then I've tried to go back and watch one and two, but I just, I don't know, I can't get into them. I don't know why. It's just like, eh. I don't really care about this. Right. But uh, so they finally dropped the finale for season 10. No, it's not 11. the finale because there's six bonus episodes or that's, whatever they're talking about. But that's about. bonus episodes. That was the finale. Then there are six bonus episodes. That's why they're called bonus. Bonus. It's I like, think it's bonus because they're filming more than they planned. That's like when you buy a 12-pack of cookies and then you get a bonus six more. You bought a 12-pack, but they gave you six more. <laughs> Anyways, point is they dropped a season finale and it was good. Um, yeah, I really miss The Walking Dead. I'm glad that it's coming back. Well, we had the, re the return of Maggie. Yes, Maggie is finally back. We had the death of Beta. Mm -hmm. Which we had what else? There was all kinds of good stuff. The going death on of there. Beta was a little kind of a letdown, and I, you know, we watched Talking Dead and you know talking about oh yeah we'll just stab him and then he's eaten by the horde and I was like okay, but like he had a big fight with Daryl and he was knocked down an elevator shaft and then oh that's him dead and then he comes back and he's not dead. But then Daryl like runs across, cuts him, and then stabs him, and, and that's it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, when they they even said on uh, Talking Dead is they didn't want a repeat of another mm -hmm. fight scene, right? And uh, they actually wanted him to fight Negan for mm -hmm. a little bit, which didn't really amount to anything until uh, Daryl came and and took care of the problem. 
Uh, but what I thought was cool is that they've discussed before in, in a couple episodes prior um, Beta's backstory. I think in the comics, was he a... a, a I, I think he was like car a car salesman or something. He, they said he, I couldn't remember. It was something like that, like something very mundane. But he, but Ryan Hurst um, talked it talked it over with the powers that be and said, "Can't we give him like a cooler backstory?" So he became Garth Brooks. Pretty much, he was like the world's top selling country artist, country singer, and but his name was Half Moon, which is kind of weird mm -hmm. for a country singer. But uh, Negan recognized him yeah. when his mask well, they, came off. When the when the horde was was de getting this, devouring him, they pulled off his mask, and you could see his forehead and his face and his hair. And it was funny because Negan looks at Daryl and goes, "Oh shit, do you know who that was?" And then Daryl's all, "Yeah, nobody." Yeah. But, <laughs> So apparently Daryl doesn't like country, country music. music. Yeah, but Negan likes country music, so that's an interesting. So that was cool. Um, Maggie got to make a cool uh, dramatic save she, on uh, Father Gabriel, mm -hmm. which was awesome. With her ninja friend, who yeah, we're going to uh, find out. Uh, I keep saying Deathlock instead of Deathstroke. Mm -hmm. right. her, her partner, Deathstroke. Right. Uh, what's interesting is the theory. One of the theories is that that I heard is that it's um, Keith, um, because he's been gone since uh, since like season seven or six. Who is this kid that you're always talking about that they never explained? Uh, Nicholas is maybe son. that's him. Maybe no, because like Nicholas's son is in two episodes. Um, Thank you and you're welcome, or no, remember and forget. And then he's never shown again. And then, and like Nicholas blows his brains out and you still don't like, it's no, like, sorry, your father's dead or anything like that. Um, but anyways, uh, no, what I heard is that it might be Keith who was, uh, who is the black guy with dreads and glasses and he and his crew were out on a run when Rick and his group showed up at Alexandria for the first time. And then he left with Tara uh, right before the whole uh, Saviors debacle, and he's been he's been off the show since then. Yeah, but but Tara came back. Tara came. So when they were going to Oceanside, and they were on that big bridge, and Tara falls over. Well, Keith, you know, like he's getting overrun, so he can't save her, and he runs away. And when she comes back. Like, the truck that they were in is gone, and then there's a little card with, like, PP on it. Um, now, just the two-letter P's. But, um, and he's like, and she's like, oh, I don't know. But so, like, Keith has been gone ever since then. Hmm. Um, so, in real world, that's been, like, three years, because that was season seven. Uh, and then, in their time, it's been many, many years. So, okay. But, was it Keith Toller? I, I then, don't remember. Uh, I haven't seen him. Then, uh, Maggie? No. No. Taller than... Uh, Tara? No. Deathstroke. Oh. I don't know. I don't think so. I think they're about the same height. But anyways, um, now that we've gone off on that rabbit trail, told you we were huge fans. Uh, we have, you know, they're able to save Father Gabriel. Um, Daryl saves Negan by killing Beta. Uh, no, that's her real name. Carol uh, drives the horde off this huge cliff in Virginia. Um, and as she looks, as she's ready to accept her fate. Yeah, actually, she was going to kill herself. Yeah, she was going to walk off. Well, actually, she wasn't going to walk off. She, she was stopped let the and pushed push her, her over. over. Yeah. Uh, but coming to the rescue is, was it Lydia is her name? Yeah. Yeah, Lydia coming to the rescue pulls her into like a little little ditch area thing. And the and the walkers just kind of walk over them and walk past them without uh, without really acknowledging mm -hmm. them. Just all of them just took a took a took a uh, long walk off a short pier. Mm-hmm. And just thousands and thousands of walkers. Now um, I still say unless. They landed on rocks, pointy rocks on their heads. They're not. They're they're still able to come back. Now, nah, like from that height, that's like almost hitting water, like concrete. People are like you. Living human beings have broken their backs falling onto water.
anyways, we were talking about the cliff, uh, the walkers falling off and dying, and or in his theory, not dying. But, I mean, that's pretty much the end of that episode. Well, no. Oh. The subplot of, of, uh, of uh, Eugene and Princess. And oh, that's right. That's right. The stormtroopers pull up. Yeah, whoever the heck those dudes yeah. were. But it was Eugene and uh, King Ezekiel. They met. And who else? Was Princess they met. And then right, it was the... Who, it was Eugene. Uh, what is her name? Eleanor? No, that's her real name. I can see her. I can see her right now. And I can't think of her name. I know her real name, but I can't think of the character's name. But anyways, but anyway, they went to go meet Stephanie, whoever Stephanie is. Mm -hmm. This uh, pen pal, or radio pen pal that Eugene's had this uh, nerd romance with over the... Um, it's kind of like he's using Tinder. <laughs> right. But anyways... And they go to find her, and she's not at their rendezvous point... They have some trials and tribulations, and they go through stuff. And they get to the rendezvous point, and she's not there. So then they decide, well, we'll just we'll we'll pick it up again in the morning. We'll go search for her. Yeah, we'll go look and for more. And Eugene people. makes a cool uh, motivational speech about not giving up, babbity blah. And then right when they're going to turn around, and and there's like railroad cars. They're in a rail yard, and they're going to hunker down in one for the night. All of a sudden, stormtroopers show up. Yeah, the lights come on. Boom, 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 boom. And dudes in white and red armor. I didn't see any red. I just see white Yeah, armor. there was like red on their chest plates, kind of like hockey pads or whatever. And so they bust out, and they just show Eugene. <gasps> right? And that's the end of the episode. And that was that. And um, it's going to come back in January. They're going to show, they'll start the six episodes. And then I guess February will be the season 12? 11. 11. 11 premiere. Season 11. And so that will make a way into. Oh, and then. Into these videos. Now, also, I did. I did it. I watched part of the premiere of uh, World Beyond. And, I, and then I watched the second episode, which was really good. The first episode was kind of sluggish to me. But I guess that's always because you don't know what's going on. You don't know what direction the story is going to take. And they're introducing the characters to you. That's always like, it's like they have to do it so you know what's going on. But it's always slow. The second episode was a lot better. You haven't watched either one of them yet. No, I have not. So you need to get on the stick. Yep. And uh, also, uh, I did watch the premiere of Fear the Walking Dead, seven season seven. Mm -hmm. Finally, it's been on for six years and never watched it. And we always go, you know, we should be watching this. Yeah, we just. So I just it. found the time because they're both on. Now that's the thing. I don't know if I can watch two shows back to back. Three. Well, they're not on on the same night right now. Mm. But they show. Um, fear, fear, and then they show World Beyond. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to pick one or the other. Which one do, do is gonna hold my attention more, or watch them on separate days? Because mm -hmm. we do have them on our DVR. Because it's getting to be a little too much, I, I think. Um, although other shows that they've proposed sound more interesting. Uh, Daryl and Carol. The Daryl and Carol one seems like. Because I guess it's the famil familiarity of the characters. Mm -hmm. You want to see them finally get together, probably. And then um, Tales of the Walking Dead is one I'm most interested in. Because that's going to be focused basically on, on different characters mm -hmm. and give a lot more of their story. New characters and, and old characters. For me, I, I want them to do Beta's backstory as a country singer. Mm -hmm. And... Negan's backstory is what was he a gym teacher or something? Uh, yeah, he was a basketball coach. Yeah, I want to see some kind of coach. I want to see those stories more than I want to see anything else. So tales, I think, is going to be cool. But they can't have it all on one night. They better move yeah. this stuff around. Um, also the Rick movie and the Rick movie, which is supposed to come to theaters now, we don't know when it's going to come out or where it's going to come out because of the uh, global pandemic that we're experiencing right now. Uh, uh, let me check the time. I had a couple of uh, notes for Marvel. Um, mm. They got the girl from Killing Eve to play She-Hulk instead of uh, Allison Brie from uh, from Glow. So that was a major thing. I just saw oh the Disney movie. 
uh, Secret Society of Second Born Royals. Yeah, we got to make. We this watched quick, that. Cause I got to get. I didn't really work. care for it. Uh, to me, it was um, TV grade. This was like something that's already on on the Disney Channel that I wouldn't watch. It was all right. You know, it wasn't bad. But the production values were really bad. They must be giving all the special effects money to Marvel, to the Marvel department. They just show up with a wheelbarrow full of money and. Here you guys go, make some cool special effects because the special effects in this thing sucked. I thought. Yeah, I don't know. It was it was okay. A decent uh, story. Decent yeah. story. There was like a couple things that should have been like explained a little better, but I mean, I'm yeah. just glad it's not a series. It was okay. It was just a movie, and it was to me, it was uh, you know, it was supposed to be superheroes, so we're like, oh, cool, let's watch it, and it's like. Eh. Could have been better. Could have been a lot better. They needed to spend more money on it. Um, even maybe even casting uh, a bigger name to be in it. At least one. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. It was it was an all right movie, but like again, it's for kids. So point is, is the adults aren't supposed to watch it. It's supposed to be like your yeah, but Disney's ten year old family entertainment so you were supposed to be able to watch it with your kids but. yeah you should be able to but it it's not meant for you it's meant for your 10 year old to watch so i didn't really care for it uh well another note that i have was i watched this morning um according to i think it was cosmic wonder uh, they're gonna bring wolverine into the mcu that's what i've heard but too. it's not it won't be hugh jackman He's, Sadness. He's just like, no, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm too old. And uh, so they've got to recast. But they're also probably going to change him up. And he's going to be a little more darker of an anti-hero character. Mm. I think that was the intention originally. And that's how he did come across in the first X-Men mm -hmm. movie, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. He didn't want to. He didn't want to join the X Men. He didn't want to have nothing to do. No, with... he's making fun of all of them. Calls yeah. Professor X wheels. Yeah. He and threatens Cyclops. Steals his motorcycle. He's steals a his dick. girlfriend. Yeah. So, in the original, if you go back, it was twenty years ago. Yeah, two thousand. So he was an antihero. He evolved as a person, which you know always happens. People do change, but. He kind of got away to where he was. He he wore the X Men uh, uniform. Mm -hmm. He wore the logo. He, you know, he mm -hmm. rode on the plane and everything else. And but so now they're talking about taking him back to the antihero stuff to where he's gonna more more closer to the comic character mm -hmm. of him. And but we don't know who that's gonna be. I think there was an interview once where they asked Hugh Jackman if you're not gonna do it, who do you think should do it? And he said Tom Hardy. Hmm. I know, uh, but Tom Hardy is Venom, so they can't do that now. Who do you think? Uh, Charlie Hunnam as Wolverine. Mm hmm. Hmm. We did like him for Ghost Rider. Yeah, Keanu Reeves has said he wants to do both Ghost Rider and Wolverine. Wolverine. Yeah. But you'd have to pick one or the other, so yeah. I and you know. can't say, "Oh, I can't see him as an action star killing people with claws," because there's like three John Wick movies. So <laughs> if he can be an action star shooting people in the face, he can be an action star gutting them. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't have a an idea of who I think could take his place. I don't know. But. Uh, oh, and then the, you didn't see this one either. This was either Cosmic Wonder or Everything Always. It might have been Everything Always. Uh, there was leaked photos of uh, of WandaVision, the set. And mm -hmm. it looks like Scarlett Johansson is going to be on there. Mm. And it looks like she's wearing, she's getting out of a van. She's dressed like a bag lady. Of course, mm -hmm. you know, they want to keep it secret. And she's wearing a scarf. But you just get the blonde hair and then... Mm -hmm. This her eyes and her nose, and she has a. I've noticed she has a kind of specific, almost like a bottle-shaped nose. Yeah. And I and if you look at it, I I'll show you. Or after work tonight, you have to take a look. It looks like her. Some other people go, no, that's just Catherine Hahn. Well, Catherine Hahn has a uh, skinny nose. So. You know, I saw I saw that similar today. I think I saw the same picture, but it was actually a different actor. It was uh, the guy that played Quicksilver. 
Uh, but anyways, with a blonde wig and dressed like a woman. Mm -hmm. It's the same exact. Same exact thing that you're talking about is what they showed, but they even talked about his hands and were like, it's so and so. Now, that's another thing, too, is because in WandaVision, she's able to manipulate everything. That That's how she brings Vision back because he, we know he's dead. And that um, it's possible that he that she's going to bring back. Well, that's, that was my obvious guess. Well, why did she bring back her brother? But the other one was that she could be bringing back Black Widow just in the WandaVision right. section of the MCU universe. It's just in their little timeline thing that she's doing. But I'll, uh, you'll have to see that picture of her because it, to me, just looking at the profile, yeah, that's her. So we'll have to see. But I think that's going to do it for this week. We're yeah. kind of in a rush to get these out. That's why we're kind of like... Yeah, I'm going to be doing a life update vlog, um, and you can kind of get why we're going through, why it's why we're rushing through this. Um, and we still want to make these videos, um, but also, you know, it's like I'm working two jobs, so I have to find the time. But anyways, and we're gonna, we're probably going to change the format of the way the show works based on the equipment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of times we go through beginning to end how the episode. The whole plot line, which I was kind of thinking we really shouldn't be doing anyway. Let people watch it for themselves. Yeah, right. We're just more like, this is cool. We're trying to get people to I mean, experience what it, we experience. You, so you need to watch it. You've never it's seen awesome. the boys. It's And it's on Amazon Prime. Uh, <laughs> One mind-blowing thing after another. We're huge Walking Dead fans. If you're a Walking Dead fan, we invite you to comment below and uh, tell us some, some of the favorite stuff that you've seen or what you're looking forward to. Always, if you want to comment below on anything that, that we talk about or even talk about us, if, whether you agree with us or disagree with us, anything like that, we want you guys to be a part of this. It's really hard because we don't have enough people, and the people that we do have, for some reason, are decided to be silent. <laughs> well, but anyways, remember, those who arrive, subscribe. Okay, and you hit the bell, hit the notification, hit everything that you need to hit. Hit yourself, hit your kid, hit your... Hit your baby Yoda in the face. Do whatever right. you got to do. But make sure that you join us again for episode 19. Don't forget, want to wrestle. Our AEW exclusive uh, reaction review show uh, is also unavailable on our channel. Timothy Long, he who smelt it. His uh, blacksmithing videos are available through our channel on YouTube. And I'm um, daddy -o. I'm the wolf. And we look forward to howling with you again next time. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the channel, and I hope you all have a great day.